Thank you very much for, uh, I really thank you, the University of Badan and the Center for Petroleum Energy and Economics for the opportunity we had. And uh, today we are going to speak about open data, open source sector coupled models and open solvers for the energy transition. And I want to really uh, stress the words to the world together because this is what we really need uh, to do. As mentioned, today we are going to speak uh, to have a first session on the vision, open data and open source tools. And then uh, Leon will take the floor to speak about the specific tool that we have we developed in the past year, basically, and in particular Pipes at Earth and Pipes at Earth SEC, including all the latest uh, developments. Let's start from this first session. In particular, bef uh, what before going to the, the details, I want to really express why we are talking about this. Uh, we are currently using about two times what it is sustainable from our of our planet, and this is clearly an unsustainable uh, trend. And we or, we also have yet to see what happens with the current uh, um, issues that we are experiencing worldwide. And anyway, given this trend, we need to really act fast before finding us in a in very critical conditions. In particular. That's why we need, we have been talking in the past of energy transition to reach sustainability. But uh, this is a very big word uh, for very difficult tasks because uh, f um, the energy transition must be cheap, reliable and accessible to all and all means worldwide and all different regions and all population because we, we cannot leave no one behind and also, to achieve this, we need a large community and in particular, we need all. And that's why we're having this discussion today. In particular, to reach the goal that we have been, we have told, we need accurate planning. And in particular, we will have a focus today on Africa uh, because this problem, so, so the problem of energy transition must be tackled and uh, to do so, there are the need for very good tools for policy analysis, investment analysis, and also continent-wide uh, synergies to exploit benefits of the mutual benefits of the different regions. Uh, in fact, resources as well as demand is highly uh, spatially located, and there can be significant synergies across the entire uh, uh, continent. And, uh, that's why tools must account for all these parts, and we are in this field. But uh, is it only tools that we need? Absolutely not. Uh, tools in reality are a very small fraction of uh, what is needed because uh, uh, data are a very critical point for having accurate uh, analysis. If we can see here, we can show here some public data of network infrastructure in Africa on the left hand side. In particular, these data are from OpenStreetMap and these are freely uh, accessible. And as you can, and on the right hand side instead, you can see an image stating what are the best uh, estimation of the current installed lines in, in the same continent. And we can see that while there are quite overlapping points, actually uh, the, map, the figure do not completely match, which means that there are, there, is, uh, there are a lot of missing data that need to be addressed. And this uh, is very important to have accurate results for the years to come. The, the one figure is the network, but the other figure is also consumption data, because uh, one of the critical points and uh, that have been experienced also in, in African countries is lack of consumption data. Uh, during my studies and also the research that I've been doing in the past, uh, I've experienced that um, there is a lot and here to work with and even though even if we look at open data at country level we can see that uh, on the primary energy and uh, production there are some publicly available data but again unfortunately Africa for, for the moment and given the time of these uh, images about a few years ago not so much 
there are some lack of data and that's why we need to work all together to work on this IEA has better data uh, but they are priced private, restricted and not publicly available but when we go into the final energy demand so which means consumption not energy production which is the first one and also primary energy which, when we go at consumption level, level the data are, are even more lacking uh, there are very few public available data uh, there are basically no data on final energy while there are uh, by IEA but again they are restricted uh, IEA for as recently um, considering re realizing all the data sets open source uh, we have to understand uh, how when this is going to be happening because uh, it means uh, that the, uh, the national uh, com com company the governments should provide the missing piece that uh, you be um, that IEA earn by licensing this data, and but this is an ongoing process. If anyone in the audience will have also some updates from that view, that point of view will be absolutely welcome to discuss about that later. But and we discussed about this, and that's why we we need to act, and that's why Pipe Summits Africa comes into play. And we want to speed up the global energy transition by using open data, open source tools, and especially together. And to, co to cover all the points missed beyond. But when, and when we go into more details, we uh, act on four main pillars. The main and the strongest pillar must be community, because we want to engage everyone. Yesterday, I've, while proposing the presentation, I saw about 122 people on Discord, but this number has already increased because I saw in the past uh, hours that more people have joined. So this number is currently increasing and we wish you to be joining us in the future. We work on data because as we see, we have seen there is the need for open data that are available, that, uh, that needs to be created and also linked because there are a lot of tons uh, of data that somehow are available, but often when it's uh, divided, distributed and not really aggregated. And we are working on this. Clearly, these two elements are needed for the energy modeling system and to create tools that enable policy informed decision and accurate investment decision. And on top of this, clearly, since we are building models and problems, we need open solvers to be able to, to solve what we create. And that's why we have also the solver pillar and not to rely on commercial based solvers that are very expensive, such as Gurobi or Cplex. When we look at our community, as mentioned, we have quite a large number of people, more than 10 contributors and different professionals uh, involved. And please, uh, we, you can be one of the other face in the next year. Clearly, we, don't, we haven't put all the images of everyone, but uh, you can be one, one of the, our next. We plan to do that as well. And we are, we are absolutely welcome to join you. Some questions that have been mentioned also are, is, are we just another energy modeling platform? Because uh, there are plenty of other energy modeling tools available. But when we think about Pipes Earth, as we experience as shown in the past uh, slides, we can see that uh, the energy modeling part is just a small piece, 10-20% of what we do in total. A large fraction is data handling and uh, data processing but the energy model part is only a small fraction that's why uh, we have that's where it is our big contribution clearly we work on our also an energy model modeling and we have also done some improvement with respect to the others but uh, data is something that is very critical and we absolutely focus on that in particular the modeling is in fact uh, is a small fraction and based on other open source tools. We, as the name suggests, heavily rely on the PIPESA framework that uh, consists of several different packages that are again open source, such as PIPESA, PIPESA Europe, PIPESA EuroSec, and other more. And on top of this, and using this advertising strong collaboration with the developers, 
we uh, we created the pipes africa repository and that is going soon to become pipes earth and uh, the detect energy and demand creator with different functions that uh, we'll see quite very very soon and obviously this is just what is already available and others will come soon also hopefully with your support but before going into the details let's see a bit our history so where we started and where we are right now and where we will go next our initiative started about uh, more than one year ago uh, about the beginning of, 20, uh, of uh, 2021 and at the beginning of this, this there were only very few people in the team and uh, that's why we, there were created only two main uh, streams of uh, activities. One is the Pipes Africa model that is focusing on energy model for the power sector uh, for Africa and the outreach team which aims at uh, highlighting what are the um, what is the marketing needed for the community to, to move beyond. Secondly, a uh, few months later New, new people joined and the AI detection team and demand team uh, have been established so to estimate demand as well as the, the estimating the actual network as we've seen to comply with the needs bef as before. Secondly, in the at the end of the year we released our first uh, um, model from Pipes Africa and we decided to move the initiative to global scale with the Pipes Earth Meets Earth initiative. A few months uh, uh, again later, the sector couple version of the model has been established as well as support for uh, open source solvers such as HICE. And currently we have beyond 30 folks in our repository and a Discord channel with beyond 100 people. And what's next? Uh, you can We can discover it together. So by going through the, the packages we have seen the pipes africa model that is focused on the power system model and there have been quite a number of releases starting from last year till uh, some um, a model that i have to say that is very very ready and uh, in the next uh, one to two months the a stable africa model will be published and you can experience and use it uh, very freely and the, at the beginning of this year, we also decided to move the initiative to Earth scale. In fact, we plan to have a first global model by the end of this year. And these pictures that you are seeing are completely available to, um, to download and uh, they are, they've been reproduced thanks to our uh, model. And clearly, there is a lot of work to do together. On top of this, uh, this uh, the beginning of the year, there have been the Pipes Earth uh, sector model that has been created and Leon will talk uh, d uh, d very deep about what the, de the developments. Uh, on April this year, there has been the first release uh, and uh, soon uh, in the next one to two months, it, another release, the version 0.02 has been is, is planned with us, all major sectors included. Currently, this uh, version is a very good stage of developments and it's in debugging phase. As mentioned, in parallel, we have the Pups Earth uh, model that is focusing on the Earth, uh, on the power model, and they see two different models, but actually, we plan on merging the two, so they we won't stay there for, so, for long. And again, any, any help is absolutely welcome. On the data creation part, that maybe most some of you may be interested in artificial intelligence uh, tasks, and this is the field for you. We have a group uh, that is focusing on detecting the network infrastructure, and this uh, and the tool Detect Energy has been created specific, specifically for that. And by using object detection with different models, such as based uh, on Detection 2, uh, PyTorch, and so on. We, are, we, have, we have processed uh, beyond 15, uh, uh, about, about 10 different uh, data sets and uh, more than 15 train models have been executed with different techniques, GAN, exactly the tool tool, and so on. The other tool package that is being created is also the demand creator that is aiming at estimating the demand through machine learning techniques. There are different uh, uh, ideas uh, and actual developments uh, based on uh, satellite images as well as uh, more simple machine learning techniques to accommodate different uh, data sets. 
For example, in our repository, uh, we are currently using global energy GIS for the demand estimation that is relying on, um, uh, on uh, regression models to estimate the demand based on the time series of uh, um, temperature, time electrical consumption, wind and, and so on, and social economic uh, characteristics of the different sites. And uh, we plan to improve in this because currently it's in, uh, so in Julia, for example, and we want to work in, with Python and there is uh, actual development here. So if you want, if you are interested in these topics, uh, you can have a good way here to learn and do research together. And what's next? This is just the beginning. So what have we seen uh, is just a part of what we are doing and we are building on top of that. But there are also uh, way other ideas about distribution systems, including economics, uh, macroeconomics models, as well as different cost analysis for different uh, regions of the area and estimate such costs. Because when we think about a, a global model, we cannot use fixed parameters, obviously, usually, because every, every country has its own specificities which must be considered. And that's why we have tons of, it, of the ideas, and with your support, I think that we can reach new ideas and new developments all together. So, after this overview, I think that's time to go more into details, and uh, I hand over to Leon that will talk more about the Pipes Earth and Pipes Earth SEC initiative with very fresh results of what they have achieved so far. Thank you very much for your attention and please, Leon, uh, you can start. Great. Thank you very much, Davide, and also thank you to the University of Ibadan. Um, I'm really excited to speak to you today and not just to you, but with you. Um, I think it really makes sense to have a format like this and leave some room for questions and answers um, because we need you as a community, you as uh, the support for the model and also for the data. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I will just quickly share my screen. Um, I think I need some permission to share the screen, which are currently not available. Um, okay, now I think it should be available. <clears throat> okay, great. Great, I think you're now all able to see my screen. Um, so yeah, thank you very much, Davide, for the first part on Vision, Open Data and Open Source Tools. And um, now I'm happy to take you on a deep dive, looking into the details of Pipes of Earth and Pipes of Earth SEC. And for this, first we'll look into some characteristics of Pipes of Earth, then have a look at uh, Pipes of Earth SEC, and then at some case studies we're currently doing. So first of all, some characteristics of Pipes of Earth, or basically what is required for policymakers, what is required for utilities, what is required to enable an energy transition in Africa or worldwide. Um, so what we need is uh, robust energy scenarios and having the tools available at low cost. And also, of course, they need to be reliable, easy to use. And also we want to provide powerful tools which uh, enable some, some planning and also dispatch calculation. And for this, um, well, the, the whole team of Pipes Meets Earth, and luckily I'm uh, happy to be part of it now, um, have created an answer or a solution to this. Uh, it's called Pipes Meets Earth, as was already presented by Davida. And to tackle all these challenges which are required for policymakers, um, we have developed this open source model, which has great community support, even greater than uh, 60 people, uh, already 120, as Davida has looked up recently. And um, yeah, perhaps uh, Meets Earth also builds up on different tools, and uh, I want to present now or have a detailed look into how these different tools, for example, Adlight or Frame or Pipsa, how they contribute to the um, whole model and data generation in Pipes and Meets Earth. 
So how does the model work? Um, this is a graph which looks la rather confusing or might be complicated. And that's what the model seems to be at the first glance. That It, it is highly detailed and um, we have overcome this by automizing a workflow. So as you can see, all these little boxes here and lines, they symbolize different tasks. Tasks that need to be done by the model in order to create um, a whole model output and to enable scenario analysis. And thanks to SnakeMake, which is a tool uh, enabling the automated workflow, um, we can automize these tasks. So basically, it's very easy to start the model, just uh, trigger it with one command, and then all these uh, subtasks, they are automatically done by SnakeMake. And yeah. Is there a question? Um, if not, okay, then we can also move the questions to afterwards. Thank you. Um, so what we do first, we have a, a configuration file where we can set up the basic requirements for the model. For example, if we want to have any CO2 limits or what kind of technologies we want to enable or what countries we want to look at. And starting from this config file, which is rather easy to use, the automated workflow is then triggered. And well, basically, we can separate it into the very big task, which is data processing, containing of downloading data, filtering data, also cleaning data and combining data. So as you can see, lots of data tasks, as was already mentioned before. And once that is all done, we can create the model using the framework Pipesa. And once we have created the model, we can also solve the model and get results and do get robust scenarios and um, planning tools. All right, so let's jump to the little bit detail on the data processing. So we heavily rely, uh, rely on open source data sets. For example, OpenStreetMap or GADM, where we get um, population or also GDP data. And another important data set is, for example, the ERA-5, which includes lots of weather data, um, which is required for renewable energy generation, which you will see later on. And yes, these open source data sets, they will then get filtered and combined. And with this, we are able to create an energy model for Africa, as you can see here on the right hand side. Um, another big task is the power plants. So again, we have different data sets um, which include power plants for Africa. And there's an open source tool called Power Plant Matching. And with this tool, we can combine different data sets and also filter them. And then we can have a more or less clean data set on power plants in Africa. But again, as mentioned before, the data is a huge challenge. And also in this case, in case of power plants, we are always happy to receive contributions from you, from the community, to have even more data or even uh, country-specific data also required for power plants. Yeah. And one important pillar of the um, clean or sustainable energy system are renewable energies. And therefore, renewable energies play a highly important role, and we really want to um, characterize them in detail. And therefore, as mentioned before, we have the um, ERA-5 weather data set. As you can see here, for example, we have the African continent, and we have some wind speeds displayed here. And deriving from these wind speeds and also including land constraints, as you can see here as an example of Nigeria, um, where we have the eligible area where you can install renewable energies. Combining these two data sets together using the tool Adlight, we can generate um, feed-in profiles for, for example, for solar, for wind energy, for hydro. And also we're currently looking into concentrated solar power, which is also coming up and will be integrated in the model. So from this tool Adlight, we get on the one hand the profiles, for the renewable energies, but also the potentials to see in which countries or in which areas can we install how much of renewable energy. 
Second important thing is the demand data, as was already mentioned before. Demand is also not very easy because we, I mean, even specifying the current demand is a challenge, but what we want is looking into the future. Looking in the future can be done using scenarios, as we do here. We use, for example, the SSP2 scenario to quantify the global energy or electricity demand in this case. And this is also a main uh, input parameter for our model. Um, but also the demand creator uh, is highly important. And third, again, any contribution or any any knowledge on, on demand data or in general data on a specific country or even the whole continent is highly welcome and can significantly improve our data set and the whole modeling challenge. So one nice feature of um, Pipesa um, Earth is the clustering functionality. So on the left hand side, we can see um, the African continent and using um, the power lines from OSM, so OpenStreetMap, and the Nigerian country. And this is like the raw data we use. And then we can cluster um, the whole network. This is required to reduce the complexity of the model in order to get a feasible solution. And um, yeah, Pipesa or Pipesa Meets Earth has the option to set a specific clustering. So you can either choose the clustering method or also um, specify in how many nodes you want to have. So it's kind of a trade-off between, between details and complexity of the model. But with this clustering system, we want to achieve both, even though it's a trade-off, but um, we want to see that, like the optimum of reducing the complexity but preserve a representation of the system. So jumping to the next slide, um, we have some uh, examples here. On the left-hand side, we can see Nigeria. This uh, is one of the uh, optimization runs. And as we've seen before, we've clustered the Nigerian network uh, down to 10 nodes. And one of the results is, for example, that in these nodes uh, dominated by the, the yellow color, um, it highly makes sense or it should be encouraged to install solar energy, whereas in the south we can uh, heavily rely on gas. Um, and this doesn't work just for single countries, but all for the whole continent of Africa. Um, but again, uh, we are happy to receive any, any data or any contributions on that. All right, then so far we have talked a lot about Pipesa Earth and Pipesa Earth is like really important or really an, a nice, nice pillar of investigating the energy transition, but it's not the end. So we need to go further looking into different sectors because so far we've only looked into the electricity sector, which is highly important, but we also have other energy sectors as the heating sector or cooling sector or um, even more. And that's what we uh, created or are creating Pipes Earth Sec for to account for these other sectors as well. Um, so just to give you an example, um, so we use Pipes Earth as a base because it's really, really uh, useful and gives all the generator data and potentials and uh, the electric lines. And what we're doing now in Pipesa Earth Sec is adding uh, the heating sector, the industry sector, land transport, but also looking into aviation and shipping. So these are the main sectors we're currently focusing at. And uh, currently we're working on this and hopefully in a couple of weeks we more or less have finished the heating industry and land transport sector. And then it's also included in Pipesa Earth Sec. Nonetheless, there are more sectors looking into, like worth into looking into it. For example, desalination could be like one of the future um, important sectors which have a high energy demand. And also, like in contrast to the European energy system we frequently use, uh, look at, um, the cooling demand in Africa is one of the highest sensitivities in the model. We, at least on the demand side, um, we cannot underestimate and therefore have to include in the model. So 
Yes, let's jump to the very last part. Um, some case studies we are currently doing for Morocco. Because um, currently we are yeah, building up Hypsa Earth Sec. And for this, we are focusing on Morocco because we have like great data available on there. But as mentioned before by the leader, by the end of the year or even in November, um, we plan to expand the sector carpet version um, to expand it to whole um, continent of Africa. So, yes, this is on the left hand side. You can see, for example, a, a generator map for Nigeria, which is um, simply created, but on the right hand side also Africa. But this is not too important for now. What we want to focus at is Morocco. And for this, as you can see on the left hand side, again, we have the, the raw data also getting from pipes to earth, as we have seen before. So we can see the electric lines here and uh, also the JEDM levels, which provide information on GDP, but also on population and even more. So what we then do is apply a clustering algorithm as seen before. And um, as a third step, we have some first optimization results. This is rather small and we can't see it in detail, but it's all about the principle that we can see um, the whole network of Morocco. And then at some nodes, we can see which technology is deployed the most. For example, we can uh, see lots of wind here rather in the south, and but dominated by solar energy. And also the transmission lines they are partly enforced in areas of need. So yes, these are like the current developments going on in perhaps Earth SEC. And another important feature is the demand aggregation, because as mentioned before, demand is really crucial to the model. And especially the industry sector, it's difficult to get detailed demand on that, especially in spatial resolution. But um, luckily, we found a database where we have uh, different um, plants, for example, for the cement industry or the steel industry. And for this, we can, again, cluster them, for example, by JADM region. And then we can specify in which region is what demand from uh, which um, industry sector. All right, so let's dive up again. We've been diving deep into the model, but let's look up again. Um, as mentioned before, we really need people joining us. We are a large community, but we can profit from even more and even you can profit from that. Um, the question is, why do people join us? Like even myself, I asked the question, why would I join Pipes in Africa or Pipes Earth? And um, well, the simple reason is that it's really a great community and i really feel like that there are many developments going on and um, yes it's definitely great to be part of the team so yeah why do people join us um, for example as me it's like part of the phd project but also like as a hobby or just out of interest um, just to learn or apply methods which are really interesting and um, yeah this is like one of the main reasons for that um, to make it easier to start, we also have like um, a repository or like a folder on GitHub where we have the Pipes Africa Hackathon. And the hackathon provides a really, really simple start for every beginner. So you don't need to know, basically you don't need to do anything about uh, programming or about SnakeMake or about Git. Um, the goal is to really have an easy introduction into the model and how to use it. And for this, you can also follow the link or just Google it, perhaps the Africa Hackathon. Um, it gives you an easy overview and a good introduction. And what's also really important to mention is that even though the, the model looks highly complicated and has many tasks and rules and workflows, to actually run the model is rather easy. So once you have the setup, you can just type uh, this command line here in yeah, your command interface, and then you already uh, can create a network of, for example, Nigeria or of Africa. So the start should be really easy, and we are always welcoming people to join us in that. And yeah, our team is uh, growing very dynamically um, and having many institutions on our side. 
And yes, we're definitely happy not just to, to talk to you, but also to encourage you coming into the team and contribute, even though you might think, okay, I don't know what to contribute, um, but it looks interesting. Then we definitely have a small task for you to begin with. And then you might be even one of the uh, major contributors in future. So yes, thank you very much on that. And um, we're now really looking forward to your questions from the community. Thank you.